Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is one of those uh, series we've been looking forward to, where um, we get to get the people with the skin in the game and then we discuss some of those topics that most people wouldn't want to discuss, but all for the benefit of the ecosystem. Because again, the intention of this is really to reach out, to share our opinion, hoping that the stakeholders, the uh, private, you know, public sector, they get to hear this and maybe do something about it because, um, hey, I mean, that's all we want. We want an ecosystem, a striving ecosystem, where startups, not just local startups, but any startup can strive and then grow. So that's, and, and, and we believe sharing our opinions and uh, experience is something that can really add up to that. So yeah, um, here we are with uh, some of my guys. Um, They've been in the game for quite some time, to be honest. Yeah. So uh, on my far right, this is my right, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have Yusuf, um, co-founder and uh, CEO of Bag Innovation. Um, and here in, in the middle, we have uh, Shikama, uh, founder and uh, CEO of uh, Food Bundles. Yes. So, and I'm myself, I'm, I'm here as uh, CEO of Axis. So we've got an innate tech company, we've got an Agri tech company. I've got a fintech company, so I'm pretty much <laughs> the key number of sectors. Yeah, you know, and so yeah, I mean, um, it's going to be an open conversation, and uh, obviously touching some of the things we've been grappling with uh, and some of the challenges we think can be solved if at least the stakeholders come together and uh, and then share, you know, or at least you know converge their efforts. Now to kick us off is. Um, any startup, right? Uh, whether you're, you've been in business for two, three, you know, years or a few months, mm. access to capital is, is one of the, uh, the biggest challenge. And uh, obviously, uh, the last few months or years, we've been hearing lots of companies in, in, in Nigeria, West Africa. When you talk about West Africa, you have Nigeria, you have Ghana, you have Senegal, you have Ivory Coast. And then you go down east. You've got Kenya, uh, Uganda has mm -hmm. also some startups that have, that have raised, you know, good money. And yeah. um, you go down south, you know, South Africa, the Sadek region, pretty much. But then in Rwanda, we, I mean, we've, we've got companies. I mean, Shigama has been in the business for over ten years. Myself, you know, five last years, if not, yeah. you know, the same. And we're still struggling, you know, to really make our case. Her, you know, and 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 for me, um, I, I don't know. I mean, what do you think has to be done differently? Um, obviously, there's what we can do. There's what we can, yeah. you know, sort of. But what do you think, uh, as it is right now? Um, what do you think needs to be done? And, and again, remember, we're trying to <laughs> heat the elephant in the room. Yeah. So not no need to be politically correct, because again, <laughs> in this game, we all know that yeah. we can't survive, or at least make it by being politically correct. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, Yusuf, let's go, let's start with you. I mean, what do you think? Yeah. Access to capital, what do you think needs to be done? Uh, I mean, uh, there's a lot that needs to be done, right? As, mm -hmm. you, as you gave uh, a good introduction and talking mm -hmm. about the years of uh, you know experience that we've had now in the ecosystem, it's like we know one or two things, right? Yeah. And uh, maybe maybe just to shed some light on the topic, I can give you an example of uh, you know like uh, a few couple of days ago, I think we received this um, you know this request, which we we often do, which is like, hey guys. Uh, we see that you are in the edtech sector we are investors and we're willing to invest in different companies in africa and we want to meet you guys and like get to understand what you guys are doing and see how we can make an investment right we're doing that uh you know kind of investment so we're like yeah sure cool like uh, we're definitely opening around very soon so we'll, yeah we're happy to meet different investors um, and then when we meet these investors, we talk about what we do, they love it and they say, yes, we would love to invest a lot of money, uh, you know, like really uh, when you open your round, like, you know, let us know. Uh, however, uh, we do have this um, kind of like mandatory, uh, you know, boot camp that you have to go through uh, for a couple of hours per day for a period of like four days uh, for you to be able to even be eligible to pitch to our uh, investment network. Yeah, yeah. I see. And, uh, <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Why do I, why is it mandatory for me to go through uh, a boot camp? Uh, what is going to be the topics? What are you going to talk about? And uh, so we try to attend this boot camp and the topics are the same, right? It's the same stuff that you get online. It's the same stuff that we know 
because this is not the first time we're dealing with an investor. Obviously, we have all this knowledge. And, um, you know, uh, surprisingly, it's like, oh, if you don't participate during the boot camp, like you have less chances of actually meeting the investors, right? <laughs> so at, at this point, it becomes super funny for me because I'm like, we've passed the stage. We've passed the stage of uh, sitting in a classroom and somebody teaching us about this is how you go about uh, doing evaluation. Uh, this is what a term sheet means. Mm -hmm. And this is what, uh, you know, all these key definitions in finance. And that just shows you how, uh, you know, the, the ecosystem and, uh, you know, raising funds, it's still a very big challenge mm -hmm. for a company uh, like us, who's five years plus in the game and we've done a lot of amazing things. Mm -hmm. We have more than 15 people working with us. So obviously there's something we know. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and something that I'm, st I'm, I'm starting to really uh, push back to investors is, is uh, you know, that kind of like uh, not considering the experience that we already have exactly. and feeling like we're still small and we, uh, you know, you don't know anything and uh, yeah. let's teach you and that's, <laughs> and it's all that stuff. Right? Well, it's condescending. I mean, exactly. To be honest, I mean, like, come on. <laughs> I'm not it's like, like, I mean, it's not like I started yesterday, you know, yeah. I've been doing this. If you, I mean, numbers don't lie, they say, if you, you, you're doubting that, ask me to share with you my numbers and then that's it. End of the story. I, I don't need to just, you know, anyway, now still on that point, I mean, now I'm going, moving to Shikama. Obviously, I mean, we all know, uh, I like this guy because he speaks the truth. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so props to the government with, with the um, Run Innovation Fund. I mean, it's a fund that's been set up to really definitely, I mean, advance the ecosystem and, um, and, and invest, you know, because, you know, lots of companies, lots of startups have been complaining about access to finance and all that kind of stuff. And then as has always been as a track record show. The government of Rana is like, you know what? If these guys are delaying to understand it, let's just do it. They've yeah. done it with uh, hotels like, you know, Radisson Blue. Uh, Serena, Serena. Um, yeah. So, which it's something really, some, I mean, I personally have sort of been inspired by actually. Mm. If these people don't do this, let me just do it. However much, oh. however limited efforts or resources well, that I have, let mm -hmm. me just go for it. Yeah. And, and that's how the Run Innovation Fund came to be. So for me, by the time they announced it, I was super excited about it. I was like, hey, I mean, this is it. I remember talking to some of my shareholders like, these guys have got to have them on our cup table because I feel like we're well aligned. In terms mm, they're of coming, they're coming. Exactly. <laughs> and I mean, I'll share my experience later on. It wasn't a good one, right? Yeah. So, but now, Shikama, you know them. And uh, so this is the Run Innovation Fund that's uh, being managed by Zidangaza Capital. Do you think they're doing a good job? I mean, they've been they've been announced. I mean, I think it's been in, in operation for one year or so. And, and so far, what, what do you think? I mean, do you think they're doing a good job? What do you think they should do differently as opposed to what they're doing now? Uh, yeah, thank you very much. B before I, I reach to them, uh, mm -hmm. by the way, I think Innovation Fund has been there for probably so, more than five years, even yes. more. Yeah. I remember uh, Phoebe was the minister back then when they said, oh, there's yeah. new money coming, $100 million coming into the ecosystem. But until now, I don't know anyone who have uh, got that money. But before I go there, I think our ecosystem to access capital, mm -hmm. there are two things do wrong. Mm -hmm. Number one, we we have this approach of aid, as mm -hmm. you said. So we have so many uh, uh, working space. We have you see West Well, you see Impact Hub, you see uh, Transformation uh, Digital Transformation um, uh, Center. Mm -hmm. You you have Kena, we have Fab Lab. No one of them have a mandate to actually accelerate a startup mm -hmm. to be investable, like to mm -hmm. actually metalize of the money. Mm -hmm. So this approach of putting people in a class, <laughs> Lily, it's, it's, it's <laughs> we've yeah. negotiated their, their deals. Like, he got a bad deal for us. Yeah. Because you can't explain to me how we have so many, uh, those centers, those like uh, working space, and there's no single company mm -hmm. in tech launch raised money. Mm -hmm. And but if you look to their OPEX, how much money they spend, mm -hmm. it's in million of dollars, which I government should. take as a debt. Yeah, that's, that's, that's actually so I, I feel bad. That, that's that's mm -hmm. the first strong mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, uh, I think we don't have local understanding, like local engine network, like we don't have people understand what is a startup. Mm -hmm. The consistently mentioned the area, like the West Africa, the King, the South Africans. 
they have people who have skin the game mm -hmm. who put money in mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and they create validation mm -hmm. so if you bring people those investors the reason why they're putting in a class is because no one has ever raised money they're like oh since you're the one betting on you please this is chapter one chapter two because the, the market's not validated i bet if they went to nigeria <laughs> no 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 no, 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 no like yeah, yeah 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 so because the market's not validated mm -hmm. it makes it so complicated mm -hmm. And, and there is, you know, there's no local investors who help to validate the market. Mm -hmm. That takes me to Angaza now. Mm -hmm. Because I think they have responsibility to validate the market. Mm -hmm. And what it means, it means you have to bet on people. Mm -hmm. When investing at this stage, this is no business, honestly. Mm -hmm. The product market fit is not there. Mm -hmm. You keep changing the business model. Mm -hmm. You keep changing the, 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 the segmentation of the customer, the mm -hmm. product, the features. You keep trying. Mm -hmm. So that means that particular moment, the investor bet on you. Mm -hmm. On the person. On the person. Wow. We see Steve, he has energy, he has been there, it's been 10 years. Mm -hmm. I don't care about what he's building, but I know if we give him enough resources, Mm -hmm. he will eventually create a product. Mm -hmm. You look at Shikama, he's been there, he doesn't go for another job, but he doesn't do consultants. He focuses on the industry, yeah. and they're like, oh, now we yeah. have to invest in him. Yeah. But that's what I think Angus is not looking at. Mm -hmm. they, they are more, because we had a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. I think everyone here have yeah, had a conversation. Oh, yeah. like, oh no, this is how shit, this is how we approach things. I'm like, guys, uh, <laughs> First of all, I'm around an SME, mm -hmm. like the, the, whatever you're looking for, like uh, the, the, the revenue, the profits, it's not there mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. Second, look at me, mm -hmm. like bet on, because this is the, the pre seed and seed round, mm -hmm. which means the business is not an, there yet. I'm mm -hmm. building it. Mm -hmm. So you have to bet on me. Obviously, and, and maybe with the team, mm -hmm. am I building something makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do I have energy to learn it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what do I need? Money. And you have it. So I think the approach of the normal VCs, yet mm -hmm. we have uh, the one investment fund, um, I mean innovation fund, mm -hmm. uh, we have to look at the people, mm -hmm. we bet on them, mm -hmm. rather than uh, having the traditional way of yeah, investing in business. Yeah, yeah I mean, my, my two cents on that, because again, as you say, we've all been, you know, um, we know run innovation fund and guys capital. Yeah. And, and, and for me, I think the overall vision is correct, but just the implementation mm -hmm. lacked a few things here and there. Um, I'll just mention three of them. Now, yeah. one is they do not have um, presence on the ground mm -hmm. because they've got to have people that have been there that understand the sector to really challenge your status quo, right? Yeah. And, and that they don't have it, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and for me, that was one um, challenge or at least one of the things they need to improve on. Mm -hmm. I mean, second, the approach towards investment. And, and for me, I mean, the ticket size ranges from 250 grand and above. Yeah. Already in a non, a country where you have non-existent angel investment network, that's already complicated. That's problematic in yeah. a way. So for me, I'm like, if you're doing that, then you've got to have a different approach because yes. otherwise you're going to end up with lots of company incorporated in Rwanda, but not random companies. Yeah. So you're going to have lots of companies front flying in from the West um, or, you know, other, you know, African countries that have already hit that milestone of product market fit because they got money from other investors, you know, yes, maybe yeah. their families, which we do not have here. Yes. And in the end, we're going to be disqualified for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that, that's second. And, and the third one is more, um, again, of that approach towards, um, we don't just need the money. And, and, and you say that you nailed it really. It's more about the people, the team. Look at the people, yeah. how long they've been in the business mm. and, and the passion that drives them. Really. Yeah. Because because that's that's what drives a startup. Mm, and, sure. and, and I mean, we've got lots of startups that have spent millions and to some extent billions, you know, yeah. and then yeah. they spent years without making any money. Yeah. yeah. But eventually they made the money that they, yeah. were, sure. they wanted to make. So they, they've got to be that patience, you know, in, sure. in, in, in sort of doing that due diligence process. And even if, for instance, instead of you telling me, you know, your traction is not interesting, uh, I have another company in Kenya, in, in, in Nigeria. Yeah. This is not Kenya, right? This, yeah. is, this is Rwanda, right? Mm. And, and look, if you're comparing me to some other companies in other geographies, take into account the geography, because yeah. these this, this, this have got to be proportional as well. Yeah. And then if, for instance, if I'm asking, say, 500,000, say, mm. okay, hey, let's come up with a roadmap. Yeah. 
you know, because I believe in you, but let's mitigate the risk and then maybe start small. Yeah. When I want to give you this. We work together, yeah. trying to address some of the challenges. Because you see, that's what shows you're not just pump, you know, just dumping money on people, companies, yeah. and then later on come and say, no, this is not a good market. You know, mm. we failed, oh. so we've got to move on because you didn't do your job well. Yeah. It's not just about money, it's more about the people. How are yeah. you working with the people you're investing in to grow together? 100%. You know, because I mean, if you do that, obviously, you, you not only are you creating value for the ecosystem, but also you're creating value for your money. I yeah. think that is a yeah. market validation, which is still a problem. Yeah. If the company, mm. let's say, look at Zipline, I was say almost a unicorn. Mm. Look at Ampersand. Look at. Um, <laughs> That's a different. <laughs> yeah. Look at Bigbox. Yeah. yeah. Look at. I mean, like those yeah. companies, as yeah. you say, they come far from away. Yeah. They come here come and they benefit from. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> I, 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 the other those supplies because I'm an agri tech. It's a green economy, and yeah. and you know what to drive it. And that is this is for mm -hmm. Interesting model, innovation fund in agriculture mm -hmm. because there's environmental yeah. those BS. Mm -hmm. But surprisingly, I haven't seen a local company benefiting that. But you find the person qualify for that. That's the thing. You find the player mean, getting more money. I don't like, I, I really because have, the, you know, they were writing a time sheet to, to accept that funding. <laughs> Man, I don't know where so they mean, get a copy, but... It's, it's really problematic. Now, moving on. Now, let's yeah. touch a little bit on... Um, let's put you know, the innovation fund yeah. aside. Yeah. And then come back still on the topic of access to capital. Yeah. Let's look at you know, energy investment network in Rwanda. And and while we do not have them, at least the ones that we, we can say that they are there yeah. doing that, they're on the ground doing it, but you have lots of these grant money, you know, flowing around, you know, competition. Bad all money. This. <laughs> and for me, as, as, as an entrepreneur, yes, yeah. I mean, when you get this money, you're happy about it. Yeah. But if there's one thing that can really slow you know, the growth, <laughs> it's that. Because yeah. in the end, so what, what, what is it they do? First off, it's not on, given on merit, yeah. no. right? Yeah. That's, that's one. Yeah. Secondly, when they give it to you, they have all these other things that they ask oh. that you don't have the bandwidth for. Yeah. Reports and da 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 And then after that, um, so this takes your time. And after that, that's it. Yeah. No follow up, nothing. And for me, my approach, is, my, my understanding is um, if all this money, because I mean, other governments have done that, other countries, it's not like rocket science. Yeah. Yeah. If all this money, we have the Minister of ICT, and, and you, you talked about ICT chairman, I mean, they share their numbers. We're a member. It's like millions. And you're like, okay, how many companies have they helped to go from just a seed, a pre seed? Because when, exactly, yeah. when they share reports, they're like, <laughs> yes, we did this training, but, blah, blah. but what are the companies that have been helped actually yeah. to move from this stage to that? Because that's what we need. Yeah. Really, you know, that's what we need. Now, the question is like, if the government was to put like a special investment vehicle, whatever they want to call it, mm -hmm. you get all this money from these nonprofit and all that kind of stuff. They do, they make, they do an investment, an actual investment, you know, yeah. in a way. And then eventually exit. Mm. Yeah. Now, that investment would be to really accompany the companies, not just money, but also a team of people that are able to provide technical skills, know-how, and then you move on yeah. on that level. So for me, that has been my understanding. Until we do that, maybe some somehow, somehow we get, you know, Android investors, which we, we're yet to get. Possibly that that will be us, but it's taking us forever <laughs> to get to that point. But for me, I think if the government, the Minister of Bicycle and Innovation was to do that, that would be very helpful. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, free money, grants, <laughs> blah, 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 you know. Uh, have you been enjoying this free money? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, yeah. right? And we, we, we talked about this earlier on. It's I, I said I'll put you on the spot. So you've gotten some of that money. I, I've, I've got it. I, we, we've gotten a lot of free money. <laughs> Yeah, right no, and no. and the thing about the thing about free money right it's that it's it's very sweet right it's very sweet money it's like free money it's like into your bank account and uh you know this person is not going to be chasing you around to like uh they're, they're gonna ask exactly they're not gonna take any equity you still maintain majority uh you know shares in your company so but then they're only gonna request for like oh great what is the impact report like give me a report every two months or whatever that is <laughs> Right, exactly. But um, I would say that it really goes back to, you know, what you talked about, right? So a lot of the 
investment, let's say, vehicle that are, that are happening here, uh, it's they're forcing you to become an SME, right? It's they're requesting you to like, hey, where are the numbers? Where are the numbers? Where are the revenues? Where are the revenues? And uh, you don't really understand the concept of risk capital, mm -hmm. right? And it's something that, again, angel investors don't understand as well. It's like they're looking at your investors here in yeah. Rwanda, yeah. in Rwanda, right? We're talking about Rwanda. <laughs> <laughs> angel investors here. It's like. Uh, you get this, uh, you know, uh, high net worth people who work in like huge companies and maybe they've been able to save a little bit of money. Uh -huh. And then they're like, OK, now startups are a cool thing to do. And uh, OK, we're going to be investing in startups. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you start doing a due diligence, it, it's taking four weeks for a startup to get five thousand dollars. This is something yeah. I heard. <laughs> you know, one startup was like, yo, we've been do going through a due diligence where we wanted to get $20,000, but it took four months, but then we even lowered it down to 5K. We need 5K to keep wow. going. <laughs> and they're requesting, oh, additional documents. <laughs> I need signed contracts. And I'm saying $5,000, like, really? what is that, right? <laughs> so I'm like, um, and, then, and then with that kind of entrepreneur, if that's what's happening on the investment side of things, you know, it's uh, it makes sense for any startup to go running after a grant, right? Because a grant is gonna be, oh, I know I have a boot camp to attend for two weeks, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stand a chance. I'm just gonna have a very good story to tell in, uh, in public, and then done. I'm gonna potentially get that money. So you find these startups who have been in the game for so many years are still going around and chasing that uh, grant uh, finance. And I'm like, what are we doing? What are we missing here? We're definitely missing that aspect of saying, let's bet on the people and actually make it an investment. Because to be honest with you, we've received a lot of grants. And that's what, what's the reason? It's because we're in a, in a market that is you know, easy to get grants. It's, it's like youth unemployment, oh, education, oh, free money, free money, free money. But, 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 but let me tell you one thing is that I've never worked so hard until when I actually got an investment. Yeah, I mean, I'll, 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 you know, sweat, that's when I actually worked hard. Exactly. But for the grant, I wasn't working hard. I was like, oh, let's buy new furniture, let's get a new <laughs> office, let's <laughs> bunch of new team members, pitch deck looks nice on the team slide. But when I got investment, I started thinking, no, we need to fire people. We need to lower our cost. We need to maximize and actually start preparing for a next round. That's when I actually became a real entrepreneur, if I can say. Mm. And I'm saying, a lot of people are not getting to that point. Who's the author of this book, uh, Dead Aid? Yeah, the lady. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the grant's the same. It's Dead Aid. Because the moment you go for a grant, free money, you leave your product. Yes. Yeah. Be, trust me. Mm -hmm. And you get the money, you have no product. <laughs> then the money finish, you come back to the product, you don't have a product. So. I think uh, grant and, uh, and very you also bad. get obsessed. It yes. can become like an addiction. Yes, that's the word. You become addicted because it's, it's easy money. It's, it's a bad it's... thing to, to go for, honestly, yeah. because it kills the product. Yeah. And and also because you want to switch the story, depending on whoever giving money, exactly. you forget You're the customer. The yeah. So the customer has no role. I mean, you you are learning for the this. Is the one. Yes, <laughs> you, are, you you are building around their need, their their mm -hmm. criteria. Yeah, and you leave out to the, the oh. and you leave alone the customer. Exactly. So when you don't have a paying customer, my friend, you have no business. And and <laughs> and, and that's majority of the businesses in Rwanda. <laughs> and, and and sorry, no <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we can talk about this for hours. Yeah. Um, this was uh, first trial. I think we're gonna put a pause on this for a moment. And uh, guys, tell us what you think. Um, and and uh, we need to get more people yeah. feedback comments. Because again, we're doing this for the ecosystem. Some of the people we talked about are people we're in conversation with. So that means things could go sideways. But for the ecosystem, we're willing to do that. Because we've been here, they came, probably gonna leave us here again. So yeah. that's it. Again, as, as, as lots of people say, I mean, this is my favorite guy, um, Steve Jobs, stay hungry, stay foolish. That's what we're trying to do. And all we're doing here is definitely for the ecosystem. So I want to thank my guys here, um, Yusuf and, and Shikaba. We'll be back, but that depends on what you think and, and what you think we should talk about and, and, and you know, some of the feedbacks. So yeah, um, thank you guys for, thank you for having us. And uh, yeah, <laughs> signing out.